how can the Lord send a deceiving spirit? Now, one of the things we have to be careful of here is understanding the difference between primary and secondary causes. Primary causes are essentially those causes that God himself absolutely ordains. He basically says, I ordain this and it will happen. This is not quite a primary cause. This is more along the line of a secondary cause. And if you read the Tran um, Westminster Confession, it sort of delineates this really, really well, which is that God ordains all things, but he doesn't cause all things. Those things that are primary causes, God ordains and causes. Those are secondary causes. God allows, ordains in that he allows it, but he didn't cause it. This is how we reconcile, for example, human beings doing evil, and yet it's still within the sovereignty of God. There's a limit to what men can do as far as their evil goes, but that limit is within the purview of God himself. So God ordains it in the, in, the, in the respect that he allows it to happen, even though he doesn't condone it. So what we have here with the lying spirit is that he, there's a call, there's a need for Ahab to go and fall at Ramoth Gilead. But God opens it up to the council of, of gods, of spirits, to say, okay, how do you want to execute this? He's giving that, that autonomy to that council. And one spirit steps up the plate and say, hey, I'll do it. I want to do some evil. Let me do it. And God says, all right. How are you going to do this? I'm going to put a lying, lying lip uh, words in the mouths of the prophets. Okay. Go do it. God's not necessarily approving of it, but it's within the sovereign will that he allows it. So these spirits are acting as secondary causes. So this is how we reconcile this passage, is that these, these lying spirits are acting as secondary causes, ordained, but within sort of the, the divine purview of what God would allow, yet not necessarily condoned. And we know from, from, from what, we, when, what we understand of the divine council that the divine council did not do what they were always told. They're, they're acting as agents often outside of the sovereign will of God, the perfect will of God, even though it's within the ordained will. 